This week, we got a few more tidbits following the One Last Thing event. So that's right, this is the One Last Thing hangover. So let's go ahead together as a people and take it out. And welcome to our first Sensational Sunday. Ooh, that has a ring to it. It doesn't sound as good as Sensational Saturday. We'll make it work, okay? We'll make it work. This is Mike, and this is Mike Texted It Out. And yes, it is the weekend, so I'm here to talk about the tech news. So I switched it up last week. So on Sunday, I actually had my leather case unboxing, and I moved my news video to Wednesday because I wanted to cover the Apple event. But going forward, my news videos will be back on the weekend from now on on Sundays, a sensational Sunday. And what are we talking about this week? Well, there's three things I want to talk about are related to Apple stuff. And the first thing was Apple had some issues. Some of my last videos, my reaction to the one last thing event, I said, look, we're talking about new hardware and new software, there's bound to be some bugs. But I ain't know that there was going to be bugs before the hardware even came out. So there was an issue earlier this week around the time when Mac OS Mojave debuted or was available to download, it basically caused an issue with some apps not loading very fast, loading very slowly or not loading at all or just having weird issues. And it was, you know, a lot of Apple services like Messenger and Apple Pay, apparently it affected the Apple TV. And it wasn't just users on Mac OS Big Sur, apparently it affected Catalina Mojave too. It was an issue with basically these apps authenticating with Apple server to make sure that they're notarized apps. Apparently it was just having a hard time communicating with the server according to the Ars Technica story. So yeah, already out the gate, Big Sur doing big breaks. It's not even just breaking themselves. They break in every other legacy OS. They don't care. They're like, look, Big Sur is here. This is our, you know, iOS, Mac OS hybrid. We doing things big. We breaking everything down so we can rebuild it. That's what Big Sur did this week. So yeah, if you experience any weird issues on the 12th or you know around that time period when Big Sur was dropping on everybody, making their big presence known, it was because of some issues that occurred with the server during the release of Big Sur. But other than that though, I have personally downloaded Big Sur. I just downloaded it yesterday. I haven't had a chance to really dive into it to see what's new. I do like the way that the icons and the OS looks. I'm sorry, I know that there's Mac traditionalists. That's not me. I think it looks cool. I like the whole flatter look with the iOS type icons. I like it. I think it looks really nice. I think it looks a lot nicer than it looked before. So some people are gonna poo-poo it, but I think this is one of the best designs they've done so far of Mac OS, which is now no longer OS 10 RIP. But yeah, in all seriousness, it did break for a little bit. But it's not something that's indicative of, you know, this might happen on new hardware, but it's just one of those things, you know, with a new operating system, there's going to be things like that that can happen, even though this affected other operating systems, this is more of a server issue, but there could be weird things. So just be weary if you're upgrading, you know, software or hardware wise. Some people wait a few weeks. That's always the best strategy. I'm impatient and I don't really use my MacBook for anything important. So I just went ahead and upgraded myself. But yeah, it never hurts to wait a few weeks just to make sure there's no like weird app breaking bugs that you might be downloading and just destroy your whole computer system. You know one other thing weird that's going on? I don't know if you guys noticed during the One More Thing event, but they had a couple of times where they showcased DaVinci Resolve. Of course, me personally, I was super excited because my whole like first year and a half on YouTube, I was editing exclusively in Resolve. I actually just recently switched over to Premiere because I want to learn it. But I've done a lot with DaVinci Resolve. This whole background, for better or worse, was all done in Fusion in DaVinci Resolve. And a lot of this, like my end screen and my intro screens, I did all that stuff in Resolve. So I really love Resolve, especially the free version, which is what I used for the two years. And you really get a lot out of that free version. So when I saw them up there talking about how you can do 4K video streams on the MacBook Air, on Apple Silicone, on Resolve, and then on the MacBook Pro, they said you can do 8K without dropping a frame. We'll see if that's true or not. But, the thing was, I was just excited to see it, but it didn't dawn on me. I didn't connect the dots that, of course, they would have DaVinci Resolve up there because apparently 
their beta for arm based max is already available so if you're a resolve user and you're worried about like you know am i going to be able to use resolve on the new mac and be able to take advantage of this new hardware then the answer is probably yes but it is a beta so you know you got a new os with a new chip with a beta software so you know don't expect to run into some some issues just expect some hookups i'm, I'm not gonna lie to you but yes if you're on resolve and you are upgrading to the new mac that's good news i personally think it's kind of cool i kind of wish that i could get my hands on one of those macs just so i could try resolve up there because i was pretty awful on my macbook pro back when i had it it wasn't like super bad but it just felt like it was very processor and thermal limited so i'm really curious to see what an arm based version of apple silicone with their more efficient processors can do and hopefully for their computers especially the macbook air it just stops you know, catching on fire when you do anything like open a browser window. But we'll have to see. I'm, I'm not personally getting one. I'll have to watch other videos of people sitting there with their new Macs and I'm just in the background like my old crusty early 2020 MacBook Air that I bought right before the Apple Silicon announcement. But actually, I, I don't regret it. If you do have a newer MacBook, I say from the personal standpoint is hang on to it for a couple years and then wait until like the next version of the next next version of apple silicone because it's early version it's too many questions and then you know especially with a first generation product usually the second generation product is a pretty big improvement so i will wait but um i'm a, that's what i'm gonna do with my macbook air like it does everything i need it to and i'm really happy with it so i'm fine with waiting and have my intel one and still having the option to run windows on it if i need to at least for right now and the last hangover type thing and this really had nothing to do with the conference i just wanted to talk about it was the fact that apple tv plus is now available on playstation so ps4 and ps5 you can now download apple tv plus if that's what you're into there are some good shows up there i heard i mean i personally like the morning show that's the only thing i've watched up there i just generally don't watch a lot of tv though even though we have like subscriptions to everything i just generally don't have the free time to sit there and watch something and when i do i really have to be into it but morning show was one of those shows that grabbed me but yeah if you do have apple tv plus chances are if you bought something recently you probably have a free subscription or a free trial to apple tv plus so if you're on a playstation now and you want to check out those originals you can do that because of the apps available on playstation i'm curious like I don't know the thing i'm curious about with apple tv plus is really the naming convention because i still to me feels like apple tv plus i have to be in the apple ecosystem in order to use it even though they have apps available like on roku and now on playstation and there are other ways to get it other than having an apple tv or an iphone or an ipad but it does seem like having one of those devices especially like from the subscription standpoint it's a lot easier to sign up from one of those devices so I don't know if it's just a play at making the service more available to their users that might have other devices or if this is a way to try to attract users outside of the Apple ecosystem and how successful do they think they're going to be? Because to me, like if I wasn't in the Apple ecosystem at all, if I looked at something called Apple TV Plus, I'm like, oh, I'm not an Apple user. So whatever. It doesn't seem like something that would be open to non-Apple users, even though it kind of is. So let me know what you think. Are you excited? for DaVinci Resolve coming to arm Base Max. Are you excited for Apple TV Plus on PlayStation? Do you use Apple TV Plus? And do you enjoy stuff on it? Let me know, let me know. I'm just, I'm joking. Like I said, this it seems like an RX service, honestly. All joking aside. But you know what else seems all right? This channel sometimes, maybe. So if you, you know, if you enjoy, then go ahead and Subscribe because I will be back on Wednesday with another super cool unboxing. And the only clue I'm gonna give you is, well, it's not Apple related and it's small. So stick around. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and always do at least two things at the same time.